back into historical battles. This is me and my A6 M30, and I'm squatting up with a number of you guys. In the last episode, I was talking about how I set up a new squadron, TKC, the Krebs crew, for you guys to join it. Now, I've had a little bit of problems with it. I'm not going to focus on it in this video. I'm going to do a Q&A before I head over to Vancouver. You can find out about that maybe in the coming next day or two. But uh, I'll be talking about why there's been a little bit of confusion and some people have been ejected from the squadron and that. Basically, we filled up the squadron way too fast and I thought it was unfair. But I'll get on to more of that in a separate video. This one, it's uh, a historical battle that I think is quite entertaining and actually shows off a lot. Uh, there's some interesting stuff to actually talk about in this. And hang on towards the end of it because it gets really interesting around that point. So, I'm flying out with a number of you guys from TKC. So four man squad at the moment and I'm in my Japanese planes versus the Russians when I notice okay we're about to engage into battle and my first opponent he's all by himself this is the exact perfect thing that you'd want to happen somebody who's by himself a lone gazelle think of this as almost a safari a lone gazelle by himself and you're the cheetah hunting and no protection, you easily get on his 6, he's got no chance of outrunning you, he's got no chance of turning on you, and that's pretty much him screwed. So, <laughs> managed to take out an easy kill, and as you can see, because he was by himself, look at that, nobody to uh, harass me, nobody to try and uh, stop me from killing him. So now I've moved on over across to the other side of the map where the main engagements are happening, taking a little bit of a side shot on the uh, PE2 over here. And as you can tell, there's a whole bunch of us. It's kind of a bit of a dogfight, and in fact, more so our teammates than them. So it's kind of more like competing who's going to get the kill rather than being afraid of, oh, we might die here, uh, or there's uh, equal or uneven odds. It's just more so competing about who's going to be getting these kills, and there we go, PE2 turning on the side, which is the most perfect thing you could want to happen from, especially one of these bigger pro planes. Exposing lots of area, managing to damage him, critical him, and that's him colliding into the bottom of the ground. And I think you might actually see this here, which makes it a little bit interesting, but... Do you guys see that? His back gunner is still alive on the back of that plane! And it was still shooting at me when I was going by, and it's gonna happen again here in a few moments. So the guy is totally dead, okay? He's, he's not gonna be flying, I got the kill for it. But his back gunner is still functioning, apparently. Uh, that's one of their, another one of their Russian planes down, what is that, an I-15, there you go, there, that's the PE-2, look what he's doing, he's firing, and I was a bit afraid here actually, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, is he going to be able to actually kill us, because we're Japanese planes, any bullet, even if it's a 6 point, or 7.62 millimeter, whatever caliber it is, is going to be able to sometimes uh, do some badass damage to you, so I-153 up here, oh my gosh, he was torn to pieces, uh, this is, Exactly what I was meaning about, yeah, competing for kills. We're going to be transitioning to over to another clip now, and so since all the enemies have been finished off over here in this main engagement, this main battle, uh, I've switched on over to tab, and as you can notice, there's hardly anyone left on the, screw on the uh, enemy team. Now, if you, uh, oh, if you rewind a little bit, you'll notice that there was two of my allied fighters heading towards the enemy base past all of this AA in front of me, and just as I went out of the tab there, uh, the leaderboards, you'll notice that, oh, one of them was missing, and then you notice that the second one got shot down. Okay, uh, here's, a, here's a great tip for you guys. There is a shitload, okay, let's put it in a more polite manner. There's a boatload of AA in the middle of this map, uh, Kalkingo, I hope I'm saying it right. And you have to avoid it, and that's what I did. I went down low to the ground, hugging the ground, essentially, because... I'm at a very, um, uh, how, how would you say it, shallow angle to the AA, and so they have a hard time hitting me, especially when I'm hugging along the hills. And this is exactly what I'm doing now, because the enemy fighter, the last one on their team, is at their base. I've got a teammate who's trying to take him on over here, and there's a whole bunch of AA, so all I'm doing is hugging the ground, and you guys should probably take a notice of this here, and apply it to your game. Hug the ground when you're coming close to the enemy base because if you're high up in the sky uh, you know even a hundred meters or 200 meters they can fire at you so you've really got to keep close to that ground and here we go first uh, engagement with the what the heck is that was that a yak I can't see because my screen's a little bit slow uh, small here 
Uh, no, that's a lag. Never mind, that's a lag. Um, okay, so first engagement head on. They're very, very risky to do in Japanese planes because Japanese planes, not only in this game, but historically, were known to fall to pieces. Even in head on, in, uh, head -on engagements, especially. Alright, so taking a few shots of lag over here. And I think this is what I was wanting to really show you guys because this was really tense. I've got two kills, a number of assists, and this is what's getting really tense because there's a whole bunch of AA firing at me. You'll notice how it comes up on the screen all the time. Lag 3 right in front of me. I'm staying behind him because my turn rate is more superior than his, but take a notice of the bullets here in a second. My cannons are gone. I'm shooting a few rounds into him. Mind you, this is just low caliber bullets. It's not a 20 millimeter cannon. And there we go. The MG bullets starting to come into uh, low capacity right now. 100 and something odd to go. He's still flying. He's still flying. I'm less than 100. Critical hit. That's exactly what I need. Elevator's gone. But he's still flying normal. He wants to land. I think he wants to land. Laying all the rest of my bullets. And that's him gone. <laughs> Now it's time to get the hell on out of there. The game's over. The enemy team is dead, I'm glad. Uh, <laughs> but even if I die at this point, whatever. I've done my job, we've won the match. Um, but lucky for me, I'm still applying these rules. Stay close to the ground, just hug it, hug it! Dodge as much fire as you possibly can. Especially from those farther aw away AAs. Because they'll probably have a hard time hitting you if you're close to the ground. There we go. Managing to stay alive despite taking so much flak damage and hard no bullets left. I thought it was a bit of a cool game to show. It was really tense for me at the very end. Um, not representative of the best game in terms of you know kills I've had in the last few days, but I thought it was really cool and uh, tense, and there's a lot to talk about with it. So that's my earnings, 71,000, plenty of lions. So anyway guys, if you want to join the squadron, go ahead and send a request. We don't have many spaces left, um, so I'm really just being a bit nitpicky with who I'm letting in at the moment. But like I say in my uh, on my Facebook page, I'm willing to fly with any of you guys. Just send me a message, even if you're not in the squadron. Just say, uh, ask me if you want to get a game or something, and I'll probably jump in with you if somebody hasn't already asked me. So anyway guys, hope you enjoyed this. Until next time, this is Krebs, and I will catch you all later. Dogfight, you'll probably just come out dead. So, what I recommend is playing differently, changing up your playstyle. Go for those bombers, because your fighters are going to have a hard time taking on them, because a lot of times bombers will have turrets at the back, and fighters can't take much abuse from those bombers. And so, hey ho, I've got powerful armaments because I'm using a heavy fighter.